It's time to get back to the ABCs of real estate. Today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, you have clicked on the Wandering Without Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 154. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. The ABCs, huh, Jen O'Brien? Yes, and the ABC stands for always be connecting. That is my theme today. I want to talk about how you use ABC to continue to grow and cultivate your database. That's what's on. That's what is on the docket today. That's, That's what's cool. On the so before we go there, Jen O'Brien, uh, why is Florida and maybe Southern California the only places in the nation that aren't like sub zero oh, right now? Did we choose the right places to live or what? Holy right. simoleons. Just looking at that weather, it is frightening. I, in fact, I was going today to check into a couple people I know in the uh, clients in the Houston area. I'm a little concerned. I, once Paul, I need to see how he's doing. And uh, I was going to check in with Chance. We know a broker from the. Uh, right in the Houston area because that's really scary what's happening and uh, I, I saw something more today about that 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 this whole thing about the grid and not having you know not being prepared and whatnot right. um, yet El Paso Texas is the only one that realized they needed to have a different system and they're okay everyone else. interesting that thankfully overnight they got it down to now there's only 500,000 people without power which is a huge jump from the what three or four million or something whatever it was they're yesterday. doing rolling blackouts so people are on for three hours off for eight hours so i don't know how it's gonna be, but, but i was surprised yesterday when i uh when i was uh, hearing the news of just about across the country how many states were yeah. having power issues like oregon had horrible power issues yesterday so it's wild yeah. right i mean uh, climate is Issues, yeah, I think so. There's extreme weather. Hot. Well, that's what it is, right? It's it's the it's not that it's yeah it's yes it's February. It should be snowing everywhere, but no, it's extreme snow. Uh, just extreme. like everything is extreme. Everything's so. extreme. Well, anyway, today I will just say, as we record this, it's 77 degrees. It's partly cloudy, but it's just 77 degrees, and I'm loving life. What's the yeah. temperature in your neck? Uh, of the I haven't I haven't checked, but it's supposed to get up to be up to be about 70 as a high today, but sunny. It's it's actually quite beautiful. I love this time of year because it's oh, always it's one. cool and brisk. Pardon me. 81. A little humid. It's 81. Partly cloudy skies. We've had some rain in the evening in the middle of the night, but you know, it's all good. Life is good. I was talking to my cousin down at Fort Myers uh, the other day, and she said it was just blisteringly hot down there, over 100 degrees. Oh, so, see, a little further down the, down the state. Yep. Closer to the equator. Yeah, the closer you get, the hotter it is. And I don't life, know how that works. Life is good, though, you know? So, so we want to, we're going to, probably over the next few weeks, we'll talk a little bit about. This co the content we're going to cover today. This is a setup today, and then probably have some other topics around how to convert leads, to generate more business to get into your database. But I want to lay the groundwork today, the ABCs, if you will, of growing and cultivating your database, database, whatever you want to call it. You want to dive in? You want to talk about? It? Yeah. Right. Here we go. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. So the ABC mindset. So I came up with this. Used to be, I, I remember years ago, I had something else, always be prospecting. And I kind of don't like that word, prospecting. I just think it's so negative for most people because it, it, it goes back to the days of when I first got started in the business that... This is how I learned. We had a bullpen. I was it was Prudential, right? I don't know about you, Matt. Your first real estate. Oh sure, deal. absolutely. I had a desk in the bullpen. Uh -huh. We had Tuesday night call nights. The broker would provide pizza. That's how they get everybody to show up and and wine usually, Jan. Back oh, in the wow. day, wine. Now I would have shown up more probably, but we would have <laughs> lists. They would have lists for us, and here's a list of people to call for different reasons. Just lists of just solds, people who'd expired, and scripts and. I have had success calling out of the crisscross directory in the area that I was, you even know if you're old like me and you know what, if you're seasoned veteran like me, you'll know what that is. And I don't even know if you can get those anymore. It's like I'm the, the books are gone. 
but it was a really cool way because it was like I was calling on apartments, apartments that were near where my office was. And I had a script and I would call and we'd go right down the list. And it was basically, here's the address and here's all the people that live there. That's the cross-reference directory. And call and see if somebody wanted to buy a house. And take advantage of the low interest rates that are only 8.5%. All right, so just put that into perspective. Yep, there you go. Come on, man. It's all, it's easy getting a loan right now. Three percent still. That's it, showing that it's going to stay. You know, all the statistics are showing. All the experts are saying that you know it's not going to go much higher than three for another year. It depends on a, as the economy recovers. But anyway, the point I'm making here is you always. I changed, got rid of prospecting, and I several years ago with our whole connection thing that we have in our company. Align Connect Prosper is it's about connecting. This business is about building relationships. Okay. So what I discovered over my, I can continue to discover it doesn't change going into my, it is my 29th year in this wonderful business industry that as I come across agents, I don't care how long they've been in the business, especially the older ones that have been in the business forever, don't actually have a solid uh, system like a CRM that they're using. So we're going to talk a lot about that and how it's time to embrace it. And I just want to lay the foundation today about what it is you're doing with your business. And so ABC means always be connecting. And I feel that the best businesses, the people who are having the best time in this business are getting repeat referral business. Right, Matt, through the years, if, if you and I sat in front of a training group or today, and I asked the agents that you know weren't brand new in the business, um, even them are getting their, even those guys are getting business from people that they know. Where does most of your business come from? 80% of them, 80 to 90% of them are going to say most of my business, 80% or more comes from people that I know, my okay. sphere, my contacts, my past clients and so on. So clearly we want to get better at doing that. But this is also about how do you continually grow your database? So maintaining these connections and nurturing them and building and providing something of value. That's what I want to talk about today. So um, we have a graphic that Matt created that I love, okay? So I basically said, Matt, I just want – here's all this stuff, and this is what I'm looking for, and he did exactly what I needed. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, is there any way to make the top part of that bigger or no? We can only show it this way, right? We're, for those of you that are listening, you can uh, go to our show notes at wbnlpodcast.com or over to our YouTube channel. Do we put this on YouTube still? No. Well, yeah, we, yeah we're still putting this on YouTube. All right. Anyway, there's a graphic here that says grow your database, ABC, always be connecting. And in the middle of the image is a, a desktop computer, a Mac, a beautiful Mac or a MacBook that has CRM in the middle. Now, that stands for your client relationship management, that tool that you're not using that your company probably provides to you or your MLS provides to you. Um, and here's the deal. It's time to embrace a CRM and stop worrying about, oh, I don't know how to use it. Because if you're not using a CRM, a client relationship management system, then how the heck are you staying organized? You're not. That's the point. You're missing business. I guarantee everybody listening right now, there is someone that you know in your sphere of influence right now that is looking at houses and they're not looking on your website. You know why? Because you failed to tell them that you have a website. You haven't been staying in touch with them, but they are looking because people love to look at houses, by the sure. way. And somebody that you know, that you you talked to them whenever, months ago, and they said, oh, we'd never leave this house. They might have had something happen to them that, that they are now looking. Guess where they're looking? They're over on Redfin, Zillow, Realtor.com. Pretty much they're on Zillow. And then a lot of people like Redfin just because of the interface. So the whole point is you've got business and you're missing it. So I want to help you today with the fundamentals. And, and it starts with, number one, embrace your CRM. Start there. And you know what the deal is. Go with the one that you have. I mean, I have a license in Nevada. And if I was at a broker, my brokerage does not provide a CRM. I have one for our team that I like, which is KB4, which is awesome. But if you don't want to spend money for a CRM, in the Las Vegas Realtors, there's a prospect program. It's really pretty decent. It's free. I guarantee you, you have options, whether it's through your company, through your local association, your state association. I 100%, I almost will go out on a limb and say, I'll say 99%. You probably have an option that's actually free, if not a low-cost option. 100%, I'll go on the line and say 100% of you have low-cost options. 
uh, too free. So get your CRM and learn it. That has to be the very first thing that you do. Now, recently we've been doing some trainings uh, and I'm going back to basics with so many people and saying the best way to start learning your CRM is to actually do those initial steps, which is uh, get your list and then put it in, input it into your, into your system so you can start learning how to use your system. Okay. So that's the number one. So beyond that image. Oh, awesome. That just, <laughs> there you go. that better. Yes. So uh, for those of you who are just listening, this graphic basically shows, this is the visual that I explained to Matt that I wanted. The CRM is the foundation. This is where everything comes in. It is the technology that is nurturing and cultivating your leads. So today I just really want to talk a little bit about more about friends and family, your sphere of influence and your past clients. But as I look around this image, we have networking. That's a great way to generate leads, joining some kind of networking group the you know, or something that you're into, joining a local chamber of commerce or maybe something to do with your local homeowners association or some other passion or something that you're interested in. You'll meet people and every time you meet people, they go in the CRM. They go in the CRM and then you have and coming podcast, we'll talk about, well, what do you do now that you have them in the CRM? We'll talk about that yeah. next week. Uh, traditional lead gen, that's just everything. Hold, you know, open houses, uh, whatever, door knocking, anything else that you're doing. If you're going to do online lead gen, Facebook, Instagram, that all will connect to a CRM and you can have it be automated. Other online leads, uh, your niche market, network, building an agent network, another opportunity to generate business, right? Farming, all types of ways to farm from geographic to uh, using LinkedIn to having people. Uh, I love the idea of a surname farm, meaning farm to everybody that has your last name. All the Emersons that own houses in uh, the Anaheim area would be a great um, farm for Matt to do. Yeah, even, totally. if it was, even if it was just 10 people, but I bet there's a, more than 10 Emersons in the. For sure. Scene. But you could simply go, I'm an Emerson, you're an Emerson. Well, let's do business together. You know, um, I love that idea. Uh, your hometown farm. If you live somewhere where you were originally from Chicago, then you could have uh, you could farm to all the people who live in Chicago but have homes in your city. OK, depending on your city, that could be a huge uh, farm because you may have a destination city like in Nevada and in Florida. A lot of people are snowbirds. And mm -hmm. so, so, so many ideas, guys, here. But anyway, whole point is they all go into your CRM. So they can be cultivated. That's the first C, C here uh, beyond connecting. Uh, well, part of the connecting, the defining connecting is, well, actually, no. Connecting is what you do to connect with people so that you can add them to your database. So that's that's uh, lead gen ideas, everything I just sort of mentioned on a high level. And so that you can then the next C is cultivate. So we have, I think I have four Cs here. Connect, cultivate. Well, no. Connecting, connecting. I'm, I'm looking at my notes and I don't want to use the word prospecting. So you've got to find the lead. You've got to put them into your database so you can cultivate. Then I want to talk about personal connections and I want to talk about converting those leads. Okay. There you go. There are so, four. Those are the three C's, but the always be connecting piece of this idea, the mindset, I want you to remember the ABC mindset is that every opportunity that you have on a day, there's, there's opportunities on a daily basis for you to connect with people and add them to your database. So let me talk about that before we cultivate. I wanna give some examples. I used some examples recently in a training and they are so, I'll, I'll always use this example of my friend, Linda. I've been friends with Linda for 20 years. As a matter of fact, she reached out recently and, and talked to me and just get, you know, said, hey, I've been thinking about you, how you doing? By the way, I moved, I forgot to tell her, I moved to Florida. So we chatted about that <laughs> and, she is this outgoing personality. If you're familiar with DISC, she's a super high promoter type person and high eye, also a D, but a lot of high eye. She just the kind of person that never meets a stranger, right? You know, meets someone and instantly can connect with them. Now, the best example of the ABC mindset with Linda, and I used to talk, use her as an example when I was her broker. She was always handing out business cards, always just talking to people in everyday situations. And her business is 100 percent by referral and people and past clients. And here it is. She's trying to retire, to be honest. She is semi-retired and people just she didn't even do a great job staying in touch with the people. And they still reach out to her because she wants to semi-retire. So she has some people helping her. And she's part of the time in, in Vegas and part of the time in Minnesota. Okay. Minnesota. 
uh, in right now, not so much in Minnesota, right now in Vegas, right? So obviously. Anyway, the best story with her in finding a client was she had to go to the emergency room in Summerlin uh, one time and can't remember what it was for. Maybe I feel like she cut her hand or something. Anyway, she was in the emergency room chatting with people still as they're working on her about real estate. And um, somebody starts saying, oh, yeah, we're thinking about buying one of the nurses or attending people in there. We're thinking about buying a house. And she goes, hey, will you go into my purse right over there? I want I want to get I want to get you my card. She I'm not she. I am not, I almost bust. I am not kidding you. <laughs> she told me this. I was like, oh my God, you could absolutely be okay just going to the emergency room. But she made a sale because she was just okay with talking to people about it. A hell of a way to get business though, I'll tell you. It wasn't life threatening. So I use that as a story. And I have another, uh, you know, person, Tina, who uh, really last year, she got business from the grocery store clerk that she checked out with. She, she also has business from her hairdresser. Now, I know a lot of you already know that, but she didn't know the person that is in the grocery store until she just struck up a conversation as she checked out and she would always go to this person's line. And it took over a year of just continuing to have a conversation where it would turn to real estate and then, oh, let me like get you to talk to my lender. Well, it's going to be six months before we can buy. Great. And then, hey, how's it going? But she sold them a house. First time home buyers. Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, that's a really, uh, Linda's story is a really good take on the, or a re-branding uh, or re-theming um, of the ambulance chaser uh, motif yeah. for lawyers. It's like, no, just be in the ambulance. I, I actually use that example with her and to say, wow, you just don't stop. But this is the point. Many people are just afraid to talk and share, and she wasn't. She came from a mindset that there's opportunities every day. You could be, if you're, you know, things are opening up again. Uh, even California, can you go into a restaurant now, or no. is it still outside? Well, okay. we're starting to open up, yeah. All right. The Nevada is opening, moving to 25 to 35% occupancy, and by March, it's going to be 50% occupancy. The point is, when you're dealing with other businesses, are you talking to them about what you do? Are you le are you talking to the people that serve you, waiters, waitresses? I, I used to leave my business card. It's one of the ways I used to recruit people because if I got great service, I'd say, you'd be great in the real estate business. Oh, I've been thinking about getting my license. I, I don't know how many times. Because everybody it. does, right? Hey, Jennifer, uh -huh. I have a, a, a question. Not really a question, more of a statement. Um, don't you think most, I think everybody, most people know where they can find people. It's that they're afraid they're going to have to not know. They're afraid they're not going to know something if they're asked. Don't you think that's really a problem? It's a huge problem. And I, I feel that that's, or I'm going to get asked a question, or I think there's just a lot of people, this business is not for you if you're afraid to have a conversation with someone. Right. And I guess and, the point, I, what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is really, you don't have to worry about that because you know what, that might happen maybe, but it's usually not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You, so. To your point, Matt, um, the, one of the reasons why that you can feel better if you work on one thing and you hear, we've been talking a lot about this. How do you become the trusted advisor and the yep. local market expert? It's because you take the time to learn what's going on. So if somebody asks you the question, how's the market, you know how to respond to it. Cause that's what I think to your point, people are like, well, what if somebody asks me a question? I don't know enough about it. Or when I know more, I'll do these things. And, just have a conversation with people. You're not look. And I think the other thing why people don't do this or start up a conversation, you're not going to go, hi, grocery person, you know, checking out. What's your name? Hey, by the way, I sell real estate. Do you want to buy or sell a home? You're not doing that. You're having a conversation. That example I use with Tina is a, she did a, uh, it was over time. She just understands that there's opportunities everywhere. And eventually somebody might want to buy or sell a house. So now she can put her in, she put her in her database and send out a monthly newsletter that talks about things that are happening in the market. And now that reinforces you're a trusted advisor. You know what's going on. You're promoting things that are happening locally. You know about programs. So the only way you can do that, by the way, is learn. You go into your MLS, you learn mm -hmm. it, you study the statistics. I can't tell you when I made the shift back from being a broker last year. Was it last year or the year before? The year before. Two years ago, yeah. Yeah, two years ago. Uh, I realized, you know what, I know the market on a cursory level, but I hadn't been in the market and showing homes and selling homes and I had to dive back into it. Well, it was the best thing I ever did is I started mm -hmm. looking at it locally, getting the monthly stats that come from the various associations. You all have access to this. You do trust me. I mean, I'm, I'm learning about Canada right now. So I just went and Googled it. Well, guess what? I kind of know about each of the provinces right now, what their average sales price is. Why? Because it's available. The information is available. You have to study it. 
the Keeping Current Matters, highly, highly recommend it. Um, we'll put a link in our notes here on the show notes to our referral link. We have an affiliate link. It gets you a $25 uh, gift certificate when you sign up, gives us a month free. So full disclosure on that. Best investment I ever made. Just did my monthly market report um, for our newsletter. And I learn from David Childers does a week, a monthly report. And he goes over, here's everything you need to know to tell your clients. You get this, you can get the information, you can get the slides. There's so much content over there that helps me feel more confident. That's how I did it. So now I feel good when uh, I have a conversation and somebody asks me a question, I can, I can say, you know what, we're, the inventory is still low. It's crazy, but guess what? We have such high demand. If you're thinking of selling your home, it's really actually a good time because, and then you can say why. Yep. About buying your home, well, there's still opportunities and you have to be able to feel comfortable about talking about that. Okay, so always be connecting. And then you can say something like, hey, Matt, um, you know, I do a monthly newsletter. Uh, my clients love it because I do a monthly update on what's my take on the market. Um, if you don't mind, can I add you to that? I'd, be, I'd love to send that to you once a month. Now I can get his email. Now I can add it to it. And that is how you have conversations daily and make it a goal. Once a day, you're going to have a conversation with someone so that you can add them to your database. And then ultimately the next part we're showing here, for those of you that can see the video or go and watch the video over at WBNL, uh, what, um, podcast. Podcast. What's our, what's our, uh, what number are we on today? 154. What's that? 154. So look for 154 at WBNL Podcast and you can get this image. You can download this little image actually that might help you. It's a little infographic. So what we're talking about next is a cultivating and cultivating is leveraging your CRM for the automation, you know, to, to send those value driven. I've mentioned a monthly newsletter. Another thing you could send is a neighborhood market report. If you have a great CRM, if you have a CRM that does not have an automated valuation, you have access to probably ePropertyWatch. property watch. Most MLSs probably have that or associations have that as an add on. Uh, you know, you can just be sending information out on occasion through your CRM about buying, selling, investing, building your wealth, right? Share your tools that you have. These are all things you can do to cultivate. Do you send people to your website so you can get them off of Zillow? Send, send people your mobile app that they can download because people like to look at houses. These are all the things that you need to be doing that are value driven, that will cultivate and nurture those leads. When they're ready, they will contact you. The, the last two C's in this whole ABC thing is connect, meaning personal connections. Now that you've made that initial connection, put them into your database, your CRM, you need to make, uh, let the CRM do the, uh, the nurturing with newsletters and holidays and this and that. But I recommend highly if people that you know, talk to them four times a year, four times a year. And they could be things like a personal connection, a personal phone call, a personal text, a video text of happy birthday. If they're a past client, happy home anniversary could be around a holiday. It could be around a milestone. Maybe you're friends with them on Facebook and you notice somebody graduated from high school or uh, they got a new pet or whatever. There's opportunities to talk to people. And I think if you have more fun with that, Hey Matt, I noticed that uh, you guys just got back from a trip to Yosemite. Oh my God. How was that? Right. In his mind, he's going to Yosemite because he's posting stuff on Instagram. I am. That's the truth. It's in Yosemite. That's why I bring it up. Or I could <laughs> call up Matt and say, I've been tracking your Instagram post recently, Matt. And it's, it appears that you're missing Yosemite. Any plans to go there soon? Do you see what I'm doing? I'm not, I'm just having a conversation with somebody I know. I'm not saying, hey, let me bother you. Because that's what I think back to what you said. I think agents feel like I don't want people calling me, bothering me. You're not bothering them. I know, Matt. I'm having a conversation. After a five-minute conversation, he, he might ask me, how's the market? I can then talk about how's the market. And then I can uh, say, hey, by the way, Matt, I don't know if you know anyone. You know, do you, Who's the next person you know who might have been talking to you about buying or selling? I can work that in at the end. You know, I know you'll, you'll always think of me, you know, you can have some fun with it. Don't forget to think of me. And next time you hear someone that's thinking of buying or selling and you have them stay top of mind with that, or, Hey, are you getting my newsletter? Right. You know, I really try to step on that. If you had a chance to look at that, by the way, I also put it on my blog. Um, I'll, I'll start texting it to you in case you miss it. I know I get inundated with emails too, but I also put it on my blog, right. Or I post my video up on YouTube or whatever, and I can send you the link. So those are ways that you can connect with people, show the value, 
connect with them on a personal level and also know they keep realizing you have to keep showing them, not telling them, showing them, I want, I am that trusted advisor. I want to be that trusted advisor. I am that local market expert. Why? Because I actually study it and I do a monthly report. That's why. And I'm okay talking about what I think. And then converting, that's that's part of converting what I just did, right? You'll get new business from your sphere that has never done business with you when you continue to stay in touch with them. You'll ultimately get repeat clients and you'll get referrals. And then all the other leads that we'll talk about in upcoming podcasts, other ways that you can generate leads and do that same process to nurture, connect, and convert. Okay? So today, ABC, I want you to mainly focus on two things. Adopt the ABC mindset. Always be connecting. Look for everyday opportunities to have a conversation about real estate and add people to your database. And number two, get your CRM in order. Go get it. Go go, go. open it up. For everybody listening, I bet you have one and you haven't opened it up. Go do it. I was just speaking with a, a potential client and had this exact conversation. It's like your company has this brilliant CRM. Go put make it a priority this week that you're going to schedule some time and learn it. And the best way to learn it? is to get your list together and import your list and start using it. And then everything will start to fall in place. I leave you with that. That is your mission. Should you choose to accept it, ABC, always be connecting. Look for one person a day to have a connection with, to have a conversation with, add them to your database. That would be five people a week to your database. And oh, by the way, you can't add them to your database until you actually go create, uh, learn your CRM and start using it or huh. choosing one. Go discover and choose one. But start with your company. Start with your local board. And then uh, we can have a, a discussion another day on uh, what should be in your CRM if you got to go look for something more. That's it, Mr. Emerson. Good stuff. I am done. My, my work here is done if people would just do that. Good stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, then that's a wrap for this uh, episode of the Wander But Not Lost podcast where real estate and reality meet. You can find all of our show notes over WBNLpodcast.com or find us on YouTube at Wandering But Not Lost. No, WBNL Coaching. Hey, Jenna Ryan. Jenna Bryan, I uh, just wanted to uh, share with you that, uh, yes, we may be dinosaurs when it comes to the crisscross directory via the booklet form, but bum, all available online if you want to subscribe to the you crisscross. You Googled that? That's so yeah. funny. Five ninety five oh. for your uh, a year for your city and county. Interesting average. Well, there's so much data online now that you point out. So where it used to be a hardcover book that would come to the a office. Big blue book in our office anyway here. Yeah, it was like a telephone book, right? Yeah, totally. And they would get updated every so often. It cost the company so much money to have this. Now all that is available online and then some. There's so much way there are so many ways to subscribe and get the data of who you should be making calls to if you're farming and all that's pretty powerful. Kind of scary. Not, not spon our podcast is not sponsored by the crisscross directory. But I use crisscross directory and you want to move. That's Me awesome. too. All right. But you know, it doesn't have to be cold calls. It's going to be warm calls. So start with just people that you know. You know, I'll leave everybody with one thing here. Uh, we have talked about it in the podcast before, but don't be afraid to just reach out to everyone. If you, if you right now are listening going, I don't have any business. I, I will promise you, if you were to call everyone that you know, and this is a part of a way for you to actually get them into your database. And even if you're going to manually add them or import them and then start working on this project, let's say you have 50 people, break it down so that you, you know, over the next five weeks, you, you connect with 10 of these people. You're going to leave a message. You're going to see if you can connect. You're going to send a text. You can do it in a direct message. You can send an email. You can do all of the above. You can send a video text. But all you're going to do if you get it on the phone with them is just say, hey, Matt, it's Jan. It's been a while since I chatted. How are you doing? Yeah. I mean, honestly, guys, there's your script. How are you doing? You know, I haven't talked chatted with you in the six months. How how is the how's everything going with you know? I know Laura is, is a teacher. How is she adapting with the schools? You know, so I I either know something. All I'm going to do is ask a question, even if it's just how has things been doing for you during the pandemic? Or I might even say, I just did this the other day with someone. I I just said, hey Matt, you know, it's been a while since we we talked. Um, you know, how's everything going? Hopefully. Did you, have you had anybody, you know, that has been impacted by COVID? Stop talking. And they'll say, no, you know, I, or somebody we know just passed away or, you know. Yeah, or, you be, know prepared, be prepared for that answer, though, because you could hear some pretty yeah. bad answers. Well, I just, and if you really know them, just just start a conversation. Right. Uh, now, I know a lot of folks don't want to sometimes do this because it's like, yeah, you start this and you can't get off the phone. 
So that's okay. You're building a relationship yeah. and you really do have, you can simply say, you know what, Matt, it's been so great to connect with you. I, I have another appointment coming up. Is there another time that I could reach back? I want to finish being able to talk to you about that situation or whatever. And you want to find a way to just, you know, have a reason to call for checking in, but it could be because you just started your newsletter as an example and you sent it out and I might, how you doing? I haven't talked about, by the way, I don't know if I have your best email did you happen to get the uh, newsletter I sent out? This is, I'm kind of excited about this. And so now I can have a conversation saying, look for this every month because it's valuable. Probably not the thing to do if they just told you somebody passed away from COVID, okay? But the point I'm making is you can just call and talk to people. Sometimes people don't even know you're still in the business if you haven't chatted with them. So that's it. Just do it, people. Make a connection today. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. What's Today, up? so Jenna Brand, you doing any wandering in the next uh, over the weekend? You've been exploring. I know your your your, your new weather. We're supposed to have sunshine on Saturday, and I told my sis uh, Lorraine that I said let's go for a drive somewhere. We're going to go and look, go somewhere. We're going to go check out one of the beaches or some area or some park. So I'll keep you posted. We went down for our our yearly sojourn to Borrego Springs to see the grapefruit uh, um, orchard and picked up three huge bags of grapefruit over the weekend last week and are enjoying grapefruit every day. First squeeze, uh, you're doing your fresh squeezed grapefruit, fresh grapefruit juice. juice uh, uh, cut up uh, grapefruit in the morning, grapefruit in our salad, grapefruit in our... Uh, <laughs> And on our sauces, it's just grapefruit mania here at the Emerson Residence, and it's very exciting. We love doing that every year. Plus, it's just fun to go down to Sealy Farms. It's just an awesome place. That's cool, man. Are they? They're apparently very delicious. They are very, very delicious. They're ruby red grapefruit, and they wow. actually uh, they the sto- the farm is an interesting story. But they do a lot of exporting of their grapefruits around the world. I think Australia um, almost uh, wow. entirely gets their grapefruits from Sealy Farm. Which is, you know, just out there in the desert in San Diego County. It's pretty amazing. Ruby red grapefruits. Good stuff. Delicious. Anyway, that's all I got. That's it. Everybody make it a great week. Get the ABCs in line. Make some connections and have some fun with your business. We'll see you next week. Even though our our COVID cases are declining, uh, the vaccine is getting out there. You know what? It's not time to go be crazy, people. Keep your mask on. Wear two, right? Be safe. We are wandering, but not lost.